Hey guys, it's Lou here from DataBear.com. Welcome back for this week's DAX DataBear Necessities. This week we are looking at the related and related table functions. So let's get started. So first off, we are looking at the related function. So the syntax for the related function is related and then what it wants is a column name. Now the related function returns a related value from another table. So this sounds very familiar. It sounds a lot like an Excel VLOOKUP, but um, only better. It works on models with a one-to-one -one relationship. And it does also work on models with a many-to-one. However, the calculation needs to look up values from the one side drawing figures to the many side and we'll go into those details a bit later this does require some creative dax writing but we'll look into that so to start off with let's have a look at our model so i've got two tables here i've got a products table and a stock levels table and between these tables i've got a relationship which is a one-to-one -one relationship. If we look at the actual tables, we can see it's a list of the products table and it's got a number of other column values as well, like product sales, product percentage, and unit price. If we look at the stock levels, it's got the same amount of item codes and item names and here it gives us the available quantity of stock. So to write our first related function, I think let's write a calculated column on the products table. Great. So for this first one, I'm going to call it stock value and I'm going to call it related and in here I'm going to say give me the product unit price and I'm going to multiply it by the related table called stock levels but I want to multiply it by the quantity so in other words I want to use the product unit price and multiply it by the stock levels and quantity for each of these item names. So what Relate does here, it goes and looks for quantity and brings it into the products table and iterates over each of those to give us a figure. Let's press enter. Great, and now we can see that we have stock value with the related function. So what if I didn't want to use a calculated column, I wanted to do a measure. So let's create a measure now as well. And the measure I'm going to call stock V. And again, we'll call it re, apologies, related. And for the measure, I'm going to do a sum x of the products table and the expression I'm going to use is I'm going to call the product unit price again multiplied by the related function of the stock levels quantity. So a very similar function to what we just did but in this situation I used the sum x function uh, for the measure so that it will iterate over each row in our table. Let's press enter. Great. So let's create our first visual here. I want to see the item names. And let's put in the column value. And the calculated column and the measure. Uh, let's move it to the top. So as you can see, it calculated perfectly in both cases. So for the calculated column, 
and the measure we get the same amount. Fantastic, we'll come back to related in a moment. So let's have a look at the related table function. The syntax for the related table function is related table and the name of the table. It returns the related tables filtered so that it only includes the related rows. So it returns a table with all the rows related with the current one. It works on models with a one-to-one -one relationship and works on models with a many-to-one relationship. And it can look up values from the many side and draw figures into the one side. Let's have a look how this is done. Again, I'm going to go to the products table. Let's first create a calculated column. So for our first formula, I'm going to call it stock value related table. And what I'm going to do for the calculated column, I'm first going to do a sumx and then the related table. In this case, the related table is the stock levels table. And then the expression, I'm going to say, I want the products unit price multiplied by the stock levels quantity. Great. So let's go to the table. And again, we can see that related table did a perfect job. It gave us the exact same numbers as our related function. Let's now create a measure for the related table function. So this time we are again going to call it stock V related table. And I'm going to do again a sumx of the related table, which is the stock levels. And this time I'm going to put another sumx and over the products table. And I want the, the products unit price multiply by the stock level quantity. So you may be asking, what exactly does this formula do? So this formula calculates first, it iterates over the related table, which is the stock levels table. And then it does another iteration of the products table where it multiplies the products unit price by the stock levels quantity. If we quickly create another table, so let's do item name. And let's add in the calculated columns for stock value and the related table measure. Great. So we can see that we have exactly the same calculation or answer on an item name level. So these two formulas calculate the same figures. Until now, we've used a one to one relationship, one on the side, one on the other side. What happens if our model changed and we had extra products? So I'm going to add an extra product. We'll call it a duplicate product. And this one is from a different location. It's made in a different place. Uh, let's add some cells. Just change some of these values. Finally, let's say the unit price is different from the supplier. It is 450. Great. So let's close and apply. Okay, so first thing we have an error. It says the column item code in table products contain a duplicate value D1607B. And this is not allowed for columns on the one side of a many to one relationship. So this we need to change from a to a many to one relationship. And then let's apply our changes again. Great. So let's go back to our table and let's see what's going on now. All our calculations are still calculating correctly without any errors. So we've got stock value, we've got uh, from the related and related table functions. 
And if we have a look at both of our measures and calculated columns together, they are all still calculating 100% the same. But until now, in all our formulas, we have used the related table as the stock levels table. So even in our calculated columns, the related table is the stock levels table. And the stock levels table at this point in time is the one side and our product is the many side. So what happens if we do this the other way around? I'm going to do the same calculations, but I'm going to initiate it from the other side. So let's just copy our formula here. So this was the related function and the related table was drawing in the quantity into the products table and iterating each of each row. So if I go to stock levels now and I create a new column, I'm just going to add levels at the end. So we know this is for the stock levels table. And instead of products, I want to do stock levels. I'm going to do the stock quantity and the related, we are going to do the product. And immediately as I'm typing product, you will notice that it, it is not picking up the products table. It's not picking it up in order for us to include it into our calculation. Why does this happen? If we look at our notes, we said that in a many to one relationship, the calculation needs to look up values only from the one side to the many side. Now we're trying to draw the numbers from the many side to the one side. This is unfortunately not possible with related and we'll see why in a moment. Let's do the same thing, but let's use the related table function. So again, I'm going to copy the related table function and I'm going to add a calculated column on stock levels. Let's just call it levels. And so I'm going to say products, give me the products table. And we stain, change this to the stock level quantity. And finally, this we are going to multiply by the products unit price. So by using the related table function, it is now picking both up the stock levels and product columns. Let's press enter. So if we pull in the item name, let's just make this smaller. If we pull in the item name and our stock levels calculation, you can see it worked perfectly fine using the stock value calculation the other way around but using the related table on a many to one relationship. And that is exactly where the difference lies between related and related table functions. So related can only pull figures from the one side, drawing figures to the many side. So it looks up the values in the one side and it populates the many side. For related table, it can also work on the one-to-one -one relationships, but it can look up values from a many side and bringing it in to the one side. So that's the clear difference between the related and related table functions. I hope this has put some clarification on this topic. It does seem a little bit confusing if you are new to this, but the best way, again, to be familiar with how this works is to practice play around with it, see how it reacts when you swap it around, see how it reacts when you use related or related table functions. Thank you so much for joining me this week. I hope to see you next week. We are going to look at some more exciting DAX functions. Until next time, keep safe and stay blessed. Did you like this video? Then hit that like button. Subscribe to our channel and remember to click the bell icon to be reminded of any new videos. 
Visit databear.com to find out more about how we can turn your reporting dreams into a reality. Your data, our story.